Hi everyone, I'm Huda from Huda Beauty and I'm so excited to be here with Grazie India. I'm really excited to take this forward. Um, so we'll just get started, I guess. So, Huda, so during the pandemic, you know, the beauty industry kind of went through a major shift and the skincare segment saw a bigger growth than makeup in general. How did you as a brand owner capitalize on that? I mean, it was really convenient for us, even though we didn't know skincare was going to be such an opportunity in 2020. Um, <clears throat> I mean, as a brand owner, but even personally, I definitely found myself, you know, in a funny place uh, with makeup. It wasn't necessarily a good thing for our cosmetic business because, um, you know, it was uh, it softened for sure. Um, but it was very good for us from the skincare side. And what we noticed is, you know, um, just intuitively, I think it was really challenging to to want to do full glam all the time, not being able to leave the house. And so the skincare side of things and even just the change of like the lifestyle, like slowing down, slowing the pace, being home, wanting to put a mask on, wanting to take care of your skin. It was definitely a lifestyle change that I think was an opportunity for us as a brand because we did launch Wishful then. Um, but it was just, I think, something that, you know, um, kind of happened at the time. TikTok also took off at the time. Um, you know, I know TikTok isn't in India anymore. Um, and maybe who knows what's <laughs> going to happen the rest of the world, too. Um, but, you know, this idea of these short form videos definitely started taking off. These, yeah. like, very informative, um, you know, because shortly after that, Reels launched. And I actually love Reels. Um, so, you know, then we started to have this like very interesting shift within the influencer space where you started to get a lot of information, a lot on skincare, a lot of education on ingredients. And, um, you know, I think all of us were just at home slathering our faces with moisturizer and and masks and serums. And and I think everyone's skin during COVID became so much better. I completely agree with you on that. I think I had baby skin at that point of time. So I'm just coming out and like working from You still from have baby skin. Weird. I mean, I mean it looks like you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, like, you know, virality, like you mentioned, obviously, like, you know, TikTok just kind of took off with short form video content as well. Yeah. And it plays a huge role in virality. And that is one of the biggest factors when it comes to selling a brand as well, right? And Huda Beauty has experienced the same with, you know, your lip kits and your eye palettes just like going off shelves in like a matter of seconds. So <laughs> how do you kind of ensure that the brand still stays relevant even after the initial excitement has died down and you guys are just selling it as it is? Yeah, I think the most important thing is that the products are genuinely things that we're excited about. You know, we get we get asked to do so many things for business reasons like, oh, do this, do that. And I'm like, but I'm not excited about it. So I can't get behind it. And um, that's challenging for us as a business because you have to find the creative inspiration behind things. But I think that's what keeps the brand relevant and exciting. I'm not going to lie. During COVID, it was hard because we weren't going to labs. And that was extremely difficult. Like I like to be in the labs making makeup, playing with makeup, mixing powders, but not being able to travel, we had to rely on our labs. Luckily, we have very good labs, but that was hard for me because I like to be in the labs and like playing with things. And I like to mix our shadows by hand. I like to play with them and mix them by hand. I just feel like, I don't know, even if it's the same color that a lab, you know, a wonderful person in a lab would come up with, like a chemist would come up with, there's a difference when I feel like I made it by hand. <laughs> you know, there's a big difference. So um, I think that um, it's just really important that we always put we always put our inspiration and have genuine inspiration and excitement behind a product. It's so easy to start something and be excited about it once and then be like, okay, oh crap, I have to do this again. Um, but you have to find the excitement, the motivation and the inspiration behind it. And luckily also my team comes up with mood boards that are like, it's hard not to get inspired by them. Like it's hard. <laughs> They're so cool. All right. Love that, honestly. So, you know, there are more and more beauty brands popping up every single day. Everyone mm -hmm. has a holy grail product like, right off the bat, right? right? So, you know, how do you keep scaling up the business in the midst of that when, you know, people are falling in love with a new product every single day and it's from a different band altogether? So, for you, how is it, like, like how do you manage to, like, scale up the brand and ensure that people are still interested in stuff like that? Personally, for me, it's something that I love. Um, I love competition. I mean, this morning I was on the phone with a makeup artist, a huge one internationally. She was like, can you help me with my brand? I was like, yes. But, I, you know, like, um, and I have a meeting this week too with a with a celebrity who wants to start their own brand. And I'm 
just going to give them, I'm only giving everyone advice. Um, but I think it's exciting because it only makes the industry better. You know, when there's more innovation, more quality innovation, it makes the industry better. I don't think that we were, as a beauty community, as a beauty, you know, person in the beauty community, I don't think we were getting the best when it was just the big conglomerates giving us beauty products. They were giving us the same thing that were coming down the manufacturing, um, you know, manufacturers, uh, you know, points. And um, I think now with all the different innovation, we're getting different perspectives. I mean, I have one manufacturer who makes a lot of great innovation for us, but we are their biggest client. And I tell them all the time, no, I don't want to be your biggest client. Find other people because if, if you're only getting the inspiration from me, it's not, it's, it's very one-sided. I think inspiration, innovation only adds to the market. Um, as a beauty brand, you have to care about that. You have to really genuinely, genuinely care about beauty. I think what you see right now, and I've seen it and I hear about it, um, and I get very detailed, you know, reports on it from, uh, from people who I know very well, but there's a lot of celebrities who are launching beauty brands and they're not successful because they don't really care about beauty. Um, you know, I remember sitting with somebody and I was, and I was saying to them, like, why are you doing makeup? Go into, you know, do fashion. You're like, people know you for fashion. And I think that this is like, um, a, an important thing. People think that they need to go into makeup, but they don't know that they can do other things as well. It's so normal right now for a celebrity to be like, oh, you know, people think I'm pretty, let me start a makeup brand. And that's not the reason why you start a makeup brand. You can be gorgeous, but not know very much about makeup. Um, you know, so it's not that those things are closely linked, you know, it's uh, it's the love and passion for makeup that has to be there. Absolutely. And I completely 100% agree with you on that. So, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the beauty industry has changed by leaps and bounds over the last few years. According to you, what have been some of the biggest changes that you personally have observed in this space? I mean, I think that there are changes that maybe we have observed early on, but now we're seeing it accelerate. So like, you know, social and virality, understanding how to hack virality is something we actually grew our brand from, you know? Yeah. So even before we had a brand, we were trying to hack, you know, hack growth and hack like virality. How can we try to go viral? Because, you know, we didn't have, we didn't have any money when we started. We started the brand with $6,000, you know, bootstrapped the brand, didn't ever get capital until way later, way later. Um, I think we're still one of the only beauty brands that had experienced that, that didn't really get injection until later. So we, and we did not have any money to spend on marketing. I think I was spending sometimes like a hundred dollars on Facebook ads, did not have the capital, could not compete with these big companies. So for us, it was really about hacking virality, hacking growth, hacking, you know, that, that kind of algorithm. And I think that people now know that that is a, a great thing. And now it's like you have the big companies who also want to do that. So now it's becoming it's becoming challenging. But I think that that's what's happening ultimately is, you know, everyone's learning from each other. Um, you know, performance marketing a long time ago was not a thing that people knew. Now everybody is doing it, um, you know, and I think it becomes it's really important as a beauty brand that you stay up to speed with everything. And you're, you know, you're open to, to you know, to evolving and, you know, changing your marketing tactics. Absolutely. So, you know, you obviously started off with Huda Beauty and like that was like insane. The kind of momentum you guys reached was absolutely insane, right? Um, and then Wishful obviously came around like slightly later in the game. Um, so, you know, skincare and makeup, two completely different departments altogether. Um, what have been some of your biggest beauty learnings when it came from, you know, launching Wishful as well in the market? Yeah, when we launched Wishful, I think a lot of the things, and I feel like maybe this is something that any brand founder can take also, because it's, I don't think it was necessarily just for us for skincare, because I love skincare, I love it so much, but I, you know, I had the vision of launching it as a very small line, not with many products, and the packaging was supposed to be different, and I think I didn't listen to myself there, you know, um, and I think that was probably the biggest mistake, the biggest learning I would have said is to listen to the original vision that I had, which was very specific, very cool, um, and, uh, you know, don't get me wrong the products are still very cool the packaging would have looked different the 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 you know the number of SKUs would have been different um granted wishful has a cult following of people who like won't use anything else um you know and I and I love that but I definitely think that we could have been um you know I could have maybe trusted myself a little bit more when it came to the vision and the the you know the ethos of the brand as well you know the way it looked the way it you know it maybe the social strategy etc um but you know I'm excited that it does have the you know the following that it does and people do love it but um but yeah, I wish sometimes I, I'm like, man, should I rebrand Wishful with my original idea? Because when I brought the idea to my investors that they said, no, that's not going to work. 
And now I see so many brands that are doing that and, and you know, like five years later and they're, it's working for them. So sometimes I feel like you need to trust yourself. Yeah. Maybe that's something that you can implement in the future, of course. For so sure. You always have that avenue open for you as well. Um, yeah. So you know, there's a new it ingredient in the market every other day, right? Like um, <laughs> one day it's hyaluronic, some day it's, you know, bakuchi all. There's something going on in the industry all the time. So, you know, do you usually buy into the hype or do you choose to stick to your own formulations? No, I, I definitely do buy into some of it because I think a lot of it is just like evolution in the skincare industry. Like right now, I cannot get enough of ceramides. I am obsessed with ceramides. I'm obsessed with them. I want to put them everywhere. Um, <laughs> you know, so I definitely, I think that it's just natural. Before, um, you know, actually having a brand, I was a blogger and, be, and I was an editor for a little while as well. So I definitely was able to understand the importance of these ingredients. Like they are really, really amazing. They're very, very potent. And there's just, there's a lot of research and development that happens continuously. So we're going to get new ingredients, you know, that are going to take shape. I mean, Bakuchi is amazing. You know, it's a definitely, I, I've had the, I'm sure a lot of us have had the problems. I mean, you look like you're like, you look so young, so I don't know how old you are, but you look like you look like you're like 20 years younger than me. Um, I'm gonna be 40. Um, so I mean, maybe you are, but but you're really smart, so I'm not sure. <laughs> like you seem really advanced. Like, but anyways. Yeah, I mean, there's smart, there's really smart 20 year olds, but you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying? Like you seem like you're advanced as far as your understanding and your knowledge and your experience. But um, but you know, Bakuchiol has been a saving grace for me. Like retinol, I went through that that trap of using overusing retinol and definitely having some of the downsides of that. So there's so many great evolutions that are happening. Some of them are you know natural, um, some of them are synthetic, um, but there are amazing things that are coming out. And I, I definitely find myself gravitating towards them. I'm definitely interested in learning about them. I don't always go into using them right away, but I'm always trying to learn about them for sure. It's all even the thing is with skincare, like it's an unlearning process and a learning process every single day. So right. I'm sure every day you wake up like just wanting <laughs> to know more about what's happening, right? Um yeah. so you know, obviously now you have Huda, you have Wishful as well. Um, according to you, what kind of sets your brands apart from the others in the market? I think the one thing that really sets us apart is that we've had so much experience and so much knowledge as far as, um, you know, what we've been talking about, what we do. Um, you know, I didn't, I was a blogger and I was, I was, you know, I really bootstrapped the brand yeah. and the company for many, many years, did it for free. Um, you know, I've been offered over $10 million um, for collaborations before, did not take them. Um, which is a lot of money, you know, even offered equity in companies. And I think that's one thing that really keeps us very unique is that we are here for like the genuine love and passion of beauty. Um, you know, we are here not because we want to, I mean, yes, it's a company now and we have people we need to support and all these things, but I would be doing this whether or not we were making anything. Um, in fact, I still think it's weird that my, my, I get paid to make products. I still think that's weird, even though, you know, um, it's 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 weird to me it's weird to me like this is like a dream you know i get to make products i get to play with products like <laughs> this is just like it's wild to me you know what i mean because uh <laughs> it was my it's always been my dream and i love it i'm genuinely passionate about it but i do think that shows to our consumers um i think they know that they have a certain expectation when it comes from us i mean i've had so many products that we were like very close to finishing ordered the products in fact and then a brand would come out with something i'd be like cancel it and the team would be like what we've finished i'm like cancel it this is better you know, um, and I genuinely like this more. So I think I think there's this there's an uh, there's an aspect of authenticity that we have. And I really think it's differentiated from everyone else, yeah. even when it comes to the fact that we don't use Photoshop, we don't use filters. I mean, a lot of times these brands are using Photoshop, but they're using them on models, you know, and I'm like, well, that's really nice for you to show a model and her vulnerability. Um, did, like, Is she comfortable with that? Because like a lot of times models are not comfortable with that. I think it's very different from a, for a brand founder um, who's known maybe for a certain appearance to be to be able to show themselves without Photoshop, without makeup, without filters. Don't get me wrong. It was hard for me. I'm not trying to sound self-righteous. It was very hard for me. Oh my God. The first time I did it, I, um, it was very emotional for me, but life-changing also, it changed my life from that point on. Yeah. Um, but it was extremely, extremely hard and ext and I did feel very vulnerable, very exposed when I first did it. But I feel like now, now looking back, I think it's a differentiator for us, you know? Um, I think it's something that has set us apart, you know, some of the the authentic aspects of like the products we create, the conversations we have. I think that it's, it sets us apart big time. 
yeah and i think in terms of like authenticity that's what we're veering towards in the beauty industry and it's a good space to be in when people are like more comfortable in their own skin as well and yeah. like you mentioned you know it's a good life when you get up every single day and you get to do what you actually love doing right um so you know are there any future releases that we should be excited about be it kuda beauty be it wishful are we in for anything at the moment There's definitely something coming. Um if I'm allowed to say I'm going to say it until somebody stops me. Um <laughs> I'm going to But we have something coming from Wishful. Um you know, to be honest, the this product is in my opinion game changer. I think it's I think it's going to be the best one of its kind. Um and uh it's a cleanser that I'm so obsessed with. The ingredients are unbelievable. I I you know, I I've, I've definitely loved a good cleanser, but for me I've always felt like, eh, like they don't really make that much of a difference. My favorite one has always been the Tatcha one. Oh, the deep cleanse. I used to love that. And um my team wanted to launch a cleanser and I was like, no way. I use Tatcha deep cleanse, not going to happen. Just forget <laughs> about it. And they kept working on something, kept working on something. In the beginning I hated it. And so I was like, it's not going to happen, guys. Just accept defeat. Like you're not going to convert me. and um and then they were playing with some beautiful ingredients i'm totally giving you like <laughs> the heads up on it they're playing yeah i'm giving you the full on scoop of it but they were playing with some ingredients and one i really love which is um you know sea moss i'm obsessed with sea moss and it's just so beautiful and i cannot believe how amazing this cleanser has been <laughs> i'm giving you everything um i can't believe how amazing this cleanser has been but how healing it's been to my skin so not only does it remove my makeup but it completely heals my skin and a few other people in our team they had rosacea it's gone um i am actually i had like you know our yo glow is like a huge product for us like we sell a lot of product for that but i think i think this one has a big opportunity to take um to potentially take yo glow's place i don't want to say that but it's just it's like the best cleanser and wait till you try it you're going to be addicted to it nothing is going to compare to it it's just gentle but very effective a beautiful ingredients will soothe your skin um It's like the one that everybody in the company is addicted to. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter what you like, everyone's addicted to it and they all have beautiful skin. All uh, right, I am completely sold. I am beginning to believe. <laughs> wait till you try it. Story. Wait till you try it. You're going to love it after you try it. Just try it first, yeah. You're going to love right, it. All right, perfect. I am I'm completely game for this. And that actually brings us to the end of this. Uh thank you so much for that for like taking the time to speak with us.